Let's briefly discuss qubits and the actual quantum hardware. As an experimentalist, I can promise you that it is fascinating, and it really helps connect the dots to visualize what's actually happening when jobs are sent to a quantum computer through the cloud. The processors that we're going to be using are built with superconducting transmon qubits. Here's what a small IBM quantum processor looks like. Now these small squares here are the qubits themselves, so there are a total of five on this chip. The transmon itself is a capacitor, and it consists of two plates of metal hooked up in parallel with a nonlinear inductor called the Josephson junction. But to see the Josephson junction, you actually have to zoom in even more. It's created from two overlapping layers of superconducting metal, and where the two pieces overlap and touch is the junction. A Josephson junction is an element that can be used to create an artificial atom with multiple energy levels and we isolate the bottom two energy levels as our qubit state. The squiggly lines here represent the microwave resonators, basically 2D transmission lines coupled to the qubit. Now when we program a gate, that essentially equates to choosing a highly calibrated microwave pulse, and the specific frequency, amplitude, shape, and duration of those pulses make the qubit do specific things. The instructions for the microwave pulse go from your computer to the cloud and then are read and interpreted by room temperature control electronics, which take those instructions and physically generate the pulses. We call them microwave pulses because they all fit within the microwave frequency bandwidth, which is around one gigahertz. After the room temperature control boxes create the pulses, they travel through the cables into the dilution refrigerator and eventually to our quantum chip. The signal goes into the resonators through a wire bond on these pads, and then it flows down the transmission line into our qubits.